1 Corinthians 1, 18 and 19. Ha logos gar ha tu stauru tois men apalumenois moria estin tois de sozomenois he men dunamis the u estin gegraptai gar apalo ten sophian ton saphon kai ten sunasin ton sunaton athe teso. Now Paul continues and says ha logos gar. Notice that gar is post positive, it cannot be in the initial position but it doesn't have to be in the second position. For the word, that is the one of the cross, and logos could be translated famously in a number of different ways. Calvin chooses to translate it as sermo in John 1, whereas Jerome takes it as verbum. It means speech, not so much recorded speech, but the act of speaking. At least that's how it's typically taken. But logos here could mean message. For the message, the word, that is, the one of the cross. Notice the predicate position. To those who are perishing, tois men, tois de. This is a very classical formulation. Tois men, tois de, to some and to others. And it's used with these participles, apalumenois and sozomenois. And Paul is establishing a great parallelism here between them. Apalumenois is a participle in the masculine, plural, and dative and it is in the middle voice. Sozomenois is in the masculine plural dative also, but it is in the passive voice. So middle for apalumenois and passive for sozomenois. The message of the cross to those who are perishing, on the one hand, moria estin, it is foolishness. But to those who are being saved, tois de sozomenois. So this from the verb apalumi, a me verb, apalumi, and this one from the verb sozo, standard omega verb. But to those who are being saved, namely to us, notice how hemin is added here, almost but not quite as an afterthought. And I believe this is because Paul first draws the general principle and then he draws the specific application, namely that we are the ones who are being saved, including in, him, in this category both himself and the Corinthians. And now comes the second predicate. The first predicate of Logos is Moria. The message is foolishness. The second predicate is Dunamis. The message is power. It is the power of God, the Dunamis Theu. And the parallelism is preserved by restating, though not strictly necessary, the verb estin, estin. Typically in Greek, what is stated in the first clause is omitted in the second. This is somewhat like the English word order and choice. The Latin choice is to omit from the first what is stated in the second. But Greek can really follow either quite freely. And here it opts for, Paul opts for, including the verb at the end of both sentences, or I should say the end of both clauses. And now he gives another reason. So the gar here gives the reason for the first part. This gar gives the reason for verse 17. For it has been written, gegraptai, notice the reduplication, the lack of thematic vowel. I shall destroy, apalo, this is a future, a liquid future, I shall destroy, or set at naught, the wisdom of those who are wise, tain sophion, feminine singular accusative, object of apollo, and the understanding, the sunasin, of those who understand, atheteso, I shall set at naught. And this from Isaiah twenty nine fourteen.